Welcome to another edition of Action Video Game Talk with E3, once again, this time covering Ubisoft, and kind of sweaty because it's freaking hot and fans on it, never mind, but yeah, this time covering Ubisoft and their little press conference that they did, so I'll try to get through most of it, there's like a few major things that I probably will be talking about, which I'll do clips for later so let's hop right into it so Ubisoft kicked off their press conference with a little dance for the Just Dance 2017 game and with it they announced that it will be released in October of this year for every game system every game system except for NX the Nintendo NX it will be out next year for that system after that we get a bit of info about Ubisoft celebrating their 30th birthday anniversary. It's like, woohoo. After that, we get Ghost Recon Wildlands. We get to see... They, we're told that it's going to be solo or four-player co-op. And you get to choose... Actually, like we've seen already, you get to choose how you complete the mission your own different way. Whether you want to go stealth, guns blazing, a little bit of in-between... And we do get some gameplay. And it does look pretty awesome for an open world-ish game. And so far it has a date for March 7th, 2017. So March of next year. So this Ghost Recon Wildlands definitely looks like an interesting game. I mean, it to me it looks like a broader can be more outrageous than The Division is. Then again, I don't really have that much of a good opinion on the Ghost Recon games because I think I only tried like maybe a few of them and didn't like them. But this one I'm kind of interested in. So we go from Ghost Recon to South Park. South Park, the fractured but whole. Yes, this sounds funny. The game itself does pick up after the Stick of Truth, which we kind of figured out by the first trailer, teaser trailer that sh is shown. We do get some gameplay involving uh, the new kid from the Stick of Truth being king while everyone else is doing the whole superhero gig. So he has to get his superhero persona and stuff like that. And we get to explore some of the elements that they introduce in here. Mostly, kind of get two shown off. One called Spaces, because instead of the standard turn base, you kind of have turn, go to these squares, go to these squares, attack from here, go to these squares, attack. Yeah, this, this isn't going to be your standard RPG type this time around. And the whole time thing is kind of a bit humorous because of farts. Bad enough farts that make your team go again. Take another turn. That's about it. One thing they did announce with this is for those who pre-purchase the Fractured Butt Hole game, you get the Stick of Truth for free on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. I think on PC. And I think they said, I don't know if this is 100% correct or not, you might be able to check like the marketplace and the PSN network, but they said if you pre-purchase it now, you can start playing Stick of Truth now for free. So that's an awesome incentive to actually pre-purchase the South Park game to get the previous one that was only released on PS3 and 360 as far as I know and they did have they, they kind of shared an estimated release that right there makes it even more awesome because it's June they could finish it they could somewhat finish it by then I mean most issues with these new games well newer games is that they don't always 
100% finish them when they release. They always have to do like a one day one update, day one patch, stuff like that. And then of course the patches for the patches for the patches to patch up a patch. This uh, South Park, the fractured butthole. Yes, it still sounds weird. Is no doubt one game that will grab a lot of people's attention. Not just South Park fans, but probably just gamers overall. Well, yeah, of course it's going to get South Park fans into the gaming. But After that, we get uh, some info on the Division stuff coming out. Uh, first, we take a peek at the next expansion, the first expansion called The Underground. And we're told because of the 30th anniversary of Ubisoft, they're going to release three outfits for The Division. One from Ghost Recon, another one from Rainbow Six Siege, and the third one from Splinter Cell. And when I saw the Splinter Cell one, yeah, it, it, it looked like the Sam Fisher costume. So if this if these costumes are going to be for free, I'd say pick them up, grab them. And then we also got a look at the second expansion, Survival, where you're kind of stranded at first in this it, I want to say the uh the the whole dark zone area of the game, but it might not be. They don't exactly sh say where, except for in Manhattan. You see a sign that says Manhattan. You get a can of food, you start getting attacked, you get chased down, and when you're about to get shot, oh, guess what? Your crew finally shows up. So, overall, the division part, well, the division part of this uh, Ubisoft thing was interesting. I mean... They show off two expansions and three costumes to celebrate the 30th anniversary birthday of Ubisoft. Hey, I'm still a fan of The Division, so I'll be trying to hop back into this game whenever I can. But considering how much other stuff is coming out and is out, I still got to play through. Yeah. Next up, we get a bit of the first VR game for this Ubisoft press conference called Eagle Flight. Now we do get to see a demo played of it where it's a live PvP but actually it's more like a live team battle. When they showed off it was like a, a red team versus a blue team having to go get a dead rabbit and bring it back to their nest. And they did like a best two out of three of this match. And it looked interesting. I mean, it was more or less a... Uh... But yeah, th this game looked interesting. I, I probably wouldn't... Won't, won't be getting it due to numerous reasons, mostly because of the VR. I, I probably won't be getting the VR in a long while. Because the only thing I could get for is for the PlayStation 4, in which case I would have to get the whole move stuff from what I've seen. Which, that itself might not be too difficult to do. But if we go into a VR game that I would be interested in getting, that's this Star Trek VR Bridge Crew. With this, they actually showed off a few people from, from the recent movie, the Next Generation series, and from Voyager. Uh, from, they, they said from the Beyond movie. It was uh, the guy who plays the current Bones. Uh, I want to. I know I won't get his name right. Uh, from Next Generation, they got a uh, Labar Burton, who played Jordy LaForge. And from Voyager, they had a uh, the 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 Borgish lady. I forgot what what her real name was though. Sorry about that. All three of those people were playing along with the main designer guy, and everyone playing was playing different roles on the bridge. I mean, one guy was working the engineering, one was working the comms, one was working the navigation, and then one was the captain. This is the type of game that Star Trek fans have been wanting to play for a long time, especially in a virtual reality type of 
scenario, being able to be there on the ship in person. But of course, you know, this, this is just a little bit of what the game could be about. They could add so much more to it. Could. But we'll see. Uh, currently, this game is set for the fall, which I think is around the same time that the VR device is coming out anyway. And they did say it will be coming out for every major VR system, VR device. So obviously, PlayStation 4's VR device, the Oculus, the however other major ones. Yeah, the, the, this will probably change some people's minds to get the VR device for their systems and whatever else to try and get this, get this especially for Star Trek fans. Now, I was talking earlier about South Park fans wanting to get in on the new game that's coming out. This is going to attract, going to attract the Star Trek fans and anybody else who's been curious about exploring space and stuff like that. So yeah, th this will be an interesting game that I know uh, Bill William Bush over at uh, Fan Night. He, him and I both posted on the Facebook page, the Fan Night Facebook page, around the same time about this game. It's like, oh my. It's This is the type of game that I know Bill has wanted to play for a long, long time. So, yeah, I mean, well, everyone should try to keep an eye and ear open for any and all news as far as this game. I know I'm going to. I, wow. I, I'm just, I was just amazed by this game. Even though most gamers will be like, you're, you're just on the bridge. What's to be so amazed about? Um, you're helping run a starship. That's one of the things that you want to do as a Star Trek fan. That simple. So after Star Trek, we get For Honor. We get a bit of a trailer, look at a trailer, and then we get some Viking gameplay. And a release date of February 14th. Yes, nothing says Valentine's Day quite like slaughtering and fighting. Like old style butchering and slaughtering. Then we get to, I guess, kind of a nod to an 80s, early 90s type of game being made by the people who did the Blood Dragon game and Trials. And the game itself is called Trials of the Blood Dragon. So I guess this is going to be maybe its own standalone game that nods to the Trials and Blood Dragon. But it is supposed to be available now to get on PC, Xbox One, and PlayStation 4. After that, we get a bit of info on the Assassin's Creed movie. Mostly, talk to the director, show the behind-the-scenes video, and um, show the date. That is coming out, December 16th, 2016. From there, the press conference gets hacked. And we get some Watch Dogs 2. We get some gameplay footage... We hear about the release date, November 15th, 2016, this year. And then there's going to be some Sony exclusives, where it's going to be PS4. We'll get all the DLC content 30 days before anyone else. Which, that's kind of a, a standard thing among Sony exclusives with Ubisoft. And then that's not also counting all the Ubisoft games having gold editions or something like that. And speaking of editions, Watch Dogs 2 is going to have its collector's edition. Th there was no price listed when they announced this for the collector's edition, but I'm guessing if it's if it'll include the like the gold edition with the season pass and stuff like that, it'll probably cost probably over a hundred, I would guess. And the final thing shown at the Ubisoft E3 press conference was a game called Steep. And it's an open world uh, in the Alps where you're skydiving, uh, gliding, parachuting, skiing, snowboarding. And the whole point of the game is to have the experience of doing these awesome things with your friends. And more or less looking at the scenery as it goes by. And this thing has a 
or at least they said it's probably December of this year. So no exact date as far as the day itself, just December 2016. So yeah, U Ubisoft kind of um, kind of did an awesome press conference. The only major ones I can think of that I tried to go into detail about was the Ghost Recon Wildlands, the South Park Fract the Fractured But Whole game, the Division stuff, the Star Trek VR Bridge Crew game, maybe the Watch Dogs 2 stuff, and that's about it. So, one, two, three, four, five, five, five things. So, it definitely could have been better. That'll be it for this edition of Action Video Game Talk. Once again, thanks for joining me today, or tonight, or whenever you're watching or listening to this video. Down below, I will have the links to the Facebook page, the Fan Night stuff, and uh, later on, I will have the separate clips up. So until next time, bye.